Can this AI thumbnail maker actually boost your views to the channel and videos you publish? In this video, we're gonna find out exactly if that's the case. What I can tell you is this tool is absolutely incredible and I've been blown away by the simplicity, ease of use, and the generated images that I'm getting back. Images that I can use for thumbnails in my videos and a lot more. So if you struggle with thumbnail creation or you wanna up your game, then this is a video not to miss. For me, it's been game changing and within seconds, I can customize and generate countless thumbnails. I've always wanted to be a Sith Lord and with this new tool, it's a piece of cake. Here I placed myself in New York City on a full moon and turns out things got a little out of hand. Total zombie apocalypse. Now what sets this tool apart from so many other AI image generators is number one, the images don't look like clip art from 10 years ago. Number two, they're based and trained on my own images, meaning I can train my own AI and then I can create thumbnails based on my face, my facial expressions, and I can put myself in numerous situations or scenes, incredible. And by the way, my name is Brian. If you're new to the channel or returning closing crew, what is happening? Great to have you here. It's all about YouTube and content creation. Let's jump into this AI tool. I think you'll find it helpful. Oh, I wanna mention there are no affiliate links associated with this video or any tools I mention in this particular video. And this particular thumbnail tool handles hands, fingers, eyes, it's absolutely incredible, including text, making it seamless to literally type out a few phrases while you're having your coffee in the morning before you publish and create a thumbnail quickly. Two things, number one, I wanna show you and share with you this incredible AI generating website. And I wanna show you how you can clone yourself literally in about one hour. In fact, yesterday I spent one hour creating new images and I only used my cell phone. I didn't use the studio lighting. I was upstairs in my home. We'll go over that more. The second thing I want to cover in this video is sort of what happened yesterday. I wanted to know what would happen if I just grabbed my phone, spent only an hour, but I did take a lot of photos and then I ran them through this process. I cloned myself and I haven't seen those images yet. So we're going we're gonna to look at those images, but first let me walk you through how this process works. The website that I'm using is fall.ai or fal.ai, F-A-L.ai, and it offers numerous AI models that you can use to generate images, videos, and more. And I think this is probably gonna be video number one covering this particular model, which is called Laura or Flux Laura, which is all based on really creating and training your own AI model, again, using your own own images that you have access to. And step number one is literally very simple and you can probably have this done in literally minutes. You're gonna access that website, fal.ai. We're gonna use the model as mentioned, Flux Laura. But be aware, there are two models. Don't use the legacy. I mean, maybe play around with it, but I used Flux Laura portrait model and it was fantastic and you're gonna simply upload your images in either a zip file or number two, straight to the website. Now I recommend that you use a minimum of 50 images. And in this example, I've used around 150 to 200 images. Again, shot on my phone, didn't take long. And one of the things to consider is the more information and data you give AI, the more likely you're gonna get back the kind of imagery you want. Next, once you've got all the images together, you're gonna upload a zip of the images and if that doesn't work, because I did that last time and it failed, you can also use this other button to upload the images straight to the tool. And it was a lot, like it was nearly one gig of uh, data because I was shooting my photos in RAW to try to get the best looking photos, even though it was you know, in my home and whatnot. And it worked absolutely just fine. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is establish a trigger phrase or trigger word. This is really critical because a lot of people are using this model and the trigger word is to really pull up the own image generation that you create using your own images and so on. Now, if I just use my name, Brian, and I used a trigger phrase of Brian, well then anybody else 
that use the <laughs> trigger word Brian might impact my image output when I prompt the tool. Now after you go ahead and upload your images, you're gonna wanna click on more settings and then pay attention to steps. Steps is how many steps the AI model is gonna use to train your own custom model. The more, the better, especially if you have a lot of images. Now, if you upload 50, 100 images, I think probably 3,000, 2,000 steps is absolutely fine. That's what I started with on my first batch, and I was blown away by my results. And then when all that is done, you're going to want to click on Run Reference. And when you do that, you're going to see that your trigger word is now in the prompt. And any time you prompt this tool, again, notice now we're on Flux Laura. All right, now we're ready to finally generate some images. We've trained our own AI model and I'm really excited to see uh, what we get. Let's create a prompt. This part is important. I'll go over in more detail exactly what I'm talking about and why, but first let's just generate an image. Photorealistic image, lifelike headshot, comma, shot in a professional video studio with professional lighting. The backdrop is midnight blue and saturated, comma, a serious look and yet a bit of excitement on the face, a bit of a raised eyebrow as well. Okay, there was my prompt. Let's see what we get. It never ever gets old and it, it's pretty, it's already in progress and it's probably going to be done in just moments. Every now and then it takes a bit of time, but generally three or four seconds. And here it is. And, and frankly, it doesn't look like me. It's similar. You might think at first glance it's similar. L let's try one more and see what we get. I think the prompt is, is good enough. Certainly for some of the uh, models I trained previously with my professional cameras generated better results, but I still think we can do great using just a phone. And this one is actually pretty darn close. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is absolutely ridiculous. Now, let's just run this one more time to see what we get. Like I said, the likeness is not there on all the images. Yet in a previous model, I nailed it and like the output was on point 85 to 90% of the time. And this guy does not look like me. Again, it's, it's like it's my brother. So I want to go over really what I've discovered over the last few days. As mentioned, it's been about three days since I shot the beginning of the video you just watched. And I went in and I created dozens of image sets, trained a lot of different models, and this is what I've discovered. So the first thing I really started thinking about was the first time I started using this tool, I used thumbnail images I already generated and those images are very specific to classic headshots. Shoulders and up, that's it. Sometimes using some hands and the tool does a fine job with that. But in the second set, I wanted to capture my full body and that's where things went a little off the rails. And I think because the AI just can't see enough details in my face, especially when we're talking about a phone. Now this has 48 megapixels. The video that I'm shooting on this camera here has 50, but they're totally different and the iPhone's 48 megapixels are kind of marketing hype. I won't go into the details, but it's not even the same, not in the same boat at all. So what we need to do is we want to focus on just taking headshots with our phone like you're seeing here, here, and here. Now when we do this, we're going to generate far better results. Now you can go into this tool, you can click on request, and you can see all the images you've generated, which is really, really very helpful because you can go back and you can see the exact prompt that I used. So here for this image that we're seeing on the screen now, notice the prompt, lifelike, photorealistic, shot on a Sony A1 camera with a 50 megapixel f1.4 lens, shot with an aperture of 3.2, shot in studio with fantastic lighting, Backdrop, again, is midnight blue and highly saturated, wearing an electric yellow hoodie with a blue drawstring. Now, this image is fantastic, but what I want to do is I want to modify it more. I'm going to do that by going into settings, 
Now notice here, image size default. I'll click that near the bottom. The last option we have before custom is landscape or 16 by nine. I'll go ahead and I, I'll click on that now and let's run another example. Now these images were all taken in about literally probably five or six minutes and one of the things I noticed is they were a bit cartoony and some of the time the focus is a bit off because I've been experimenting and in this experiment I used the blurred background or cinematic mode portrait mode on the iPhone. I would not do that again. The reason why is because it blurs some of the image. So the focus might go to my chin, which it did in some of the uh, rendered photos I'm getting from the tool. So instead, just use regular photo option on an iPhone or Android and you're going to be better off. And again, the, the tool is going to do a great job with the full body. Just really zoom in and get very, very close to your subject to capture more detail. Now, this one is pretty darn good and it looks fantastic. This time I'm going to tweak the prompt just a bit and let's talk about the prompts. One of the things I've noticed is that you can tell it something like use saturated and contrasting colors, but the tool really, it has to understand what contrasting colors are. I know blue and yellow work really great together. So let's create a prompt really playing with those colors and let's see what we get. Hyper realistic photo realism comma shot on a high end photography camera in a professional studio setting. Backdrop is midnight blue and highly saturated, comma. Wearing a yellow hoodie with blue drawstrings, comma. Excited smirk on my face about this new tool that will help me to generate better thumbnails to get better click-through rate or viewers clicking on my videos and so on. That one's pretty good. I'm going to save it now. To save, you can just click this little downward arrow here. I'll download that. Then I'm going to go, this is on my iPad. I'm going to come into the image. It looks pretty good, but the focus is definitely, it's a lot uh, softer than my other photos where again, I was really using a professional camera and so on. These still, I think these are more than good enough. Let's talk a little bit about the actual settings when you train the model. The more steps you take, the better, as well as the number of photos you use to train the model. And 10,000 steps is going to generate better results. The cost of that is not really that much. So I started out with 20 bucks. You can do the same. You could start off with 10 bucks and you'd have plenty to train a model with, say, 3,500 steps and then generate a bunch of images, which I did and I was blown away by the results. Now, what about the idea of this? tool helping you to boost your views. Well, one of the most critical things is how often viewers are clicking on your video. And if you have a click-through rate, that's the actual metric. The metric for how often people click is called the click-through rate. You can find it under latest video performance as well as other locations in YouTube Studio. And again, it's critical. If you're anywhere below, say, 4 to 5%, once you get up to 1,000, 2,000 views, you want to strive to bring it up. In fact, you always want to strive to improve the metrics that really matter. And click-through rate is literally one of the most important metrics to focus on. Check out the video on the screen, which can help you understand the algorithm and or get more views on YouTube.